he doesn't understand all the directions or he gets distracted on the way and he loses his way and never arrives at the masjid the kind of guidance that involves arriving is by the will of Allah Ta'ala with this guidance a person is taken to the destination and so in the above example this would be when the person would actually take you by the hand and take you right there to the masjid and so arrival is certain now in this uh, remembrance and praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a God blesses a person with knowledge and so here Shaykh Masum wants to uh, communicate about three levels of knowledge the first level is about Alma Yaqeen and this is the knowledge that something exists and you've learned about this knowledge from a reliable source and the example is for example Mecca for someone who's never been in Mecca Mukarramah and so you've heard it you've never been there you've heard from a lot of reliable people and you've read in books that it's there but you actually have not had the experience of being there that's the first level of knowledge the second level of knowledge is anal yaqeen and this is where you see it but you don't actually enter the place so for example uh, one example could be that you would fly over Mecca Mukarramah in an airplane so you can say uh, you saw it but you can't say that you are actually there experiencing it and the highest level here of knowledge is haq yaqeen and this is certainty because using the same uh, anal same example here this is when a person enters the city enters Mecca Mukarramah and there can't be any doubt about its existence and no one else can ever put a doubt in your existence it is firmly uh, in your being now obviously the question is how does one achieve this last state this haqa yaqeen and this is where this is the aim this kind of knowledge this taste the actual tasting the actual experience is the aim of tasawwuf and one can only do this if one has a purified nafs that's the reason why it's a human responsibility to conquer the nafs this is the key to the gate of tasawwuf and this is once through that gate there are many levels uh, Sheikh Masoom mentions 25 some of them for example uh, involve repentance others involve asceticism another level would be virtue ihsan and for those who are privileged you know this is a great privilege to be able to experience and achieve these levels and in tasawwuf one should be reminded one should never forget that tasawwuf is based integrally on the Quran so my dear brothers and sisters there are hundreds of definitions of tasawwuf but there's one fact and that is the difference between experience and talk and so those who strive on the path toward this purification and conquering their nafs are the ones who inshallah will succeed in this greatest quest this jihad al-akbar following the blessed path of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and in this way they clean their heart from bad inclinations so their heart can be filled with the light of God and in the Holy Quran remembrance of God and advice 
are for those who are with God in their heart and who listen and accept the guidance that is presented in the Quran and those who are present to testify in their heart. The more perfect the cleansing of the heart and the cutting away of all that is self, all of the I and the my and the mine, the more our whole being can be dedicated entirely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, you might ask, well, how does one go about doing this? Is this really possible? You could ask, how can one totally concentrate one's waking life to remembering God? You could say, well, I have to work. I have to answer the telephone. I have to take care of my children. All of these things. But the Sufis have learned to teach us through the Quranic and Hadith guidelines of how to keep Allah alive in our hearts while our minds might be going about these worldly tasks. And so, with this, there is a du'a that Sheikh Masum has presented to us. I pray to Allah most earnestly to open the gates of His Rahmah and give us the blessings of conquering our nafs so that we can offer prayers which would be worthy of acceptance by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless us with following the blessed path of the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, so we can be among those blessed with the knowledge of truth that Subhan Allah Ta'ala has communicated to us through his blessed Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Thank you. The title of um, my talk is The Inner and Outer Aspects of Following the Sunnah. I would like to start with a conversation um, where Shamsa Tabrizi, the sheikh, the, the directing sheikh of Molana Rumi, is talking about Bayezid Bistami, a 9th century Sufi. They say, this is Shamsa Tabrizi speaking now, they say that Bayezid did not eat melons because Bayezid said, I have never found, found out in what manner the Prophet وسلم, ate melon. But Shamsa Tabrizi said, following the Sunnah is both superficial and meaningful. Bayezid has observed the superficial aspect of following the Sunnah, but he has failed to observe the truth and the meaning of following the Sunnah. Muhammad وسلم, says, Glory to God Almighty, SubhanAllah. We have not worshipped you as it befits you. Bayezid says, Subhani, glory to me, how great is my station. And so basically, this is the message I'm going to try to communicate to you tonight, that there's a big difference between not eating melons and following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, sunnah originally meant a custom or a pattern of behavior to be followed. Later, it took on a technical meaning, which we use now, which is the ideal of Muslim behavior based upon the Prophet's words and deeds and customary practices, which is communicated in the authoritative hadith collections. And indeed, as we all know, the authority of the Sunnah is second only to the Quran. And the Quran itself states 13 times a message which is usually in the words of